You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hey, Homeworthy. I'm Raymond. Welcome to my New York loft. Come on in. Hi, I'm Raymond Boozer of Apartment 48 Interiors. Apartment 48 is a design firm here in New York City. And we're here in my one bedroom loft slash office in NoHo. I went to school for interior design in Indiana. I grew up in Indiana. I was actually born in Alabama, but I grew up in Indiana and I studied interior design. And then I moved to New York like years and years ago and thought I'd work in design or fashion or something. And I opened a store. I had a home furnishing store called Apartment 48 for 18 years, which I loved for a long time, but then I kind of outgrew it. When my apartment was on the cover of El Decor, in like 2007, people started asking me to decorate their homes and it became like a thing. So I just evolved into an interior designer overnight. We're in my foyer and I wanna show you my front door. I just pin up things of cards that people give me, things that come in the mail. A lot of them are art shows, things from my friends who are artists. My business manager is really great at choosing cards. She's really great at writing cards, and most of these are from her. But I have things from like all over. I voted, stuff like that, stickers. And over the years, I just pen everything up on the door. People don't really see it until they leave, though, because most people don't look back. So people come in, and then they're like here for a whole, you know, dinner or a party. This place is great for parties, by the way. And when they're leaving, they're like, oh, wow, you have all the stuff in your door. And I'm like, yeah, it's always been there. Um, I have this great photograph. It's actually um, from Ralph Lauren. I got it for Christmas like 20 years ago, and I had it framed. It was my favorite, favorite photograph for a long time. And I put it here because I, I like seeing it, and you see it from like everywhere in the apartment. These walls are um, pretty cool. It's fabric. It's a wall covering by a company called Latisse, and I just thought I wanted to do something really dramatic and like kind of dark, you know, which is kind of counterintuitive because this is the darkest part of the apartment, but I just thought I'd lean into it and wrap the walls in this, like, it's like purple and brown, like kind of like shimmery silk. And the whole kitchen is like that, which you didn't expect the kitchen because it bleeds into, it's just this apartment's just like one space. So the kitchen bleeds from the foyer into like the kitchen into the living room into the dining room. I also want to show you a painting by Jerry Gonzalez. It's like really beautiful. He's an artist I discovered who went to Pratt and he is really good at this photorealism thing. It's just like scarves piled up and I love collage. So this really spoke to me. It was like the first real art I'd ever bought. When I was small, when I was younger, I didn't know that interior design was a career. I always loved interiors and I used to subscribe to interior design magazines like House Beautiful and I would look at all the floor plans and study them. But I didn't know that people did it for a living. You know, when I got to college and I had to choose what I wanted to do, I thought I was gonna be a psychiatrist because I was always interested in psychology and like self-improvement. But once I learned that there was an interior design department, I was fascinated by it and I took some classes as an elective and I was really good at it for some reason. I just, it just clicked and I knew it was gonna be my future. Right over here is my bedroom. We're gonna visit that later, but let's check out the kitchen because we're already in it. This is my kitchen. It's pretty small, but I think it does a job. I mean, I really don't cook a lot. I'm a really good cook, but I don't like to mess it up because this is also our office, so I don't really like cleaning up, so I don't mess it up. I think of the kitchen as more like a place where you go to get a drink of water or to go to make like coffee. You know, I don't really cook. I cook Thanksgiving like every year for my friends, but that's like the one big meal. But I said before, this apartment was like one big space and I thought it'd be nice to have some kind of island. So I found this like restoration hardware of like butcher block thing and I put it in the center and then I had a light put here. The light used to be here, but I had the electrician move it to the center. 
and trying to create like a hallway to walk into the living room and the kitchen feels a little bit more separate because before this whole thing was just like kitchen it was just blank space you know it's interesting when you're in a loft you have to kind of define the spaces and there are a lot of pipes and things in the ceiling there's a 10 ceiling and what I decided to do is to try to make some of the pipes disappear and accentuate others. So I have some of the pipes are painted white to disappear and some of the paint pipes are painted gray because I thought they were like, they sort of like are noticeable and you can't like really disregard them. It's kind of like a process of deciding what you want to show and what you want to hide. My kitchen's pretty simple. I mean, it's like white cabinets, beautiful countertop, which I love. So I'm super happy with this Italian marble. But I keep all the stuff from my past life above the kitchen cabinets. This is kind of like represents like what my store was like and things I had in the past. It doesn't necessarily represent me now, but I use it a lot for reference in my work. So do a lot of things. We just did a thing recently for Serena and Lily where we did a room which was very rustic and like homey. And that's a vibe that I'm kind of known for, but I feel like it's who I used to be. You know, but I can't let go of it. So I have all this stuff up here that doesn't really relate to anything else in the apartment. You know, I love stuff. I mean, it should be obvious once you see everything that I have that it's hard for me to let go of things. And I'm always acquiring new things. I love collecting vases, boxes, glassware, planters. I have so many planters. It's just like, yeah, more is more for me. I think that since I was small, I've always loved fashion. Fashion has been a big thing for me in my life, and I've always been attracted to color. So the fashion like influences really influenced my interior design work. I um, grew up like learning about fashion first, and then I learned that interior design was a business, and then I realized that there was a lot of different things, a lot of different styles, a lot of different people doing different things. and. At some point when I had my store, a magazine said, hey, do you know about color? And I was like, hey, yeah, I do. But, you know, I didn't really know about color, <laughs> but I learned about it. And they kind of dubbed me as a color guru. I experimented a lot with bright colors in my shop and people seemed to like it. And I became like a thing for me. And now people really come to me for color. This is a great apartment for parties. So I have a really cool like space set up for a bar. I um, have like nine different kinds of tequila. I drink a lot of tequila because I'm diabetic. I think it's healthier, you know, as far as drinking goes. But we do entertain a lot, like at least before the pandemic, I entertain a lot. I have a lot of parties, usually like 100 people in this space. And I think the space looks best when it's filled with people, actually. I also want to show you this painting by a kid I used to babysit for. I mean, he's a growing up now, but he was a kid when I babysat for him. His name is Justin Robinson, and he did this painting for me like 10 years ago. And now he just did his first show, little show last year. He's really become a big artist, and I'm very proud of him. There's actually a picture of him here, Justin, when he was like three years old, and now he's like 32, and he's a fancy artist. He's really, um, really, really talented. I love abstract art. And when I heard that he was an artist, I talked to his parents and I was like, I need to see his work, you know? And it turned out that, you know, I love one of the things and I have it. Another thing I've had for a long time is this bust of Caesar. It's actually from my old store. Like, I don't know why, but nobody ever bought it. So I've had it in my apartment for like 15 years and it goes with me everywhere last year. It was in the Hamptons at a show house. You know, it makes the rounds. It's plaster. I also love this little John Darian plate. I, I'm a big John Darian fan, so I have a lot of John Darian. You'll notice as we walk through. So I have a lot of art in this space. I love this painting by Audrey Stone. One day I went to Brooklyn, to Bushwick, to all the galleries, and I discovered this gallery that had these really cool paintings. I love anything that's like a rainbow, and I had to buy something. So I bought this Audrey Stone. This poster I got at MoMA. I'm a big fan of Yoko Ono. And you know, in the 60s, she and John Lennon had that like bed in where they were like protesting the Vietnam War, and I was like, I have to buy this, and I had it framed. Like, war is over. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like um, my vibe, really. 
Like anything 60s and 70s, I'm obsessed with. This apartment was one huge space and we needed an office, so we created this box. They call it the hot box because it gets really hot in here. But um, we built these partitions because legally you can build a wall, but you can't go to the ceiling unless you get a permit. So we built this partition, we built a little box and I put a window in so that the employees could see out and still get light from the windows in the living room. Let's, let's go check it out. I was looking for some place to move and I really decided I was gonna live in a loft. And when I first saw this apartment, it was a big white box. It was just like one big room and everything was white. And I just thought this is a lot of square footage. We can do things. You know, we built walls, we created rooms, I changed the colors, you know, I painted the brick. We just made it more of like me, you know, more color. Color is something I'm known for, so there had to be a lot of color. I did a custom millwork bookcase, and I decided to do like a bright blue color because we do a lot of millwork for clients, but it's usually white. But then I thought I'll experiment, you know, it's my own home and I'll do like a bright blue and it's become like this like iconic thing. My home is a loft. I never thought I'd live in a loft, but I love it now. I needed a space where we can live and work and I'd done a lot of lofts for other people. I'd done lofts in Tribeca and Flatiron and I thought maybe I want to try loft living. You know, it's very open plan. You can build out spaces and we had space for an office here. But I'd say my style is kind of bohemian, but at the same time, a little bit controlled. So now we're in our office and there's a lot of stuff here. Um, my biggest favorite thing in here is the inspiration pen board, which I used to use for projects, but really now it's just more like anything that inspires me. There's some stuff that's project stuff. There's show houses that we've done. I say basically everything. I mean, I'm not a hoarder, but I, it's hard for me to let go of things. I um, sort of collect postcards. So there are tons of postcards mixed in. There's a um, collection of fabric I did with Beth Harris. We did this with the Bad Guild, which is the Black Artists and Designers Guild. We designed a line of fabrics. So a lot of these fabrics and wall coverings and trim and things are from that collection. It's called Origin. So I'm really proud of that. Oh, I love this lampshade. It's by Susie Bellamy. We love like London. Well, I should say I love London, so I make everybody else love it too. So we get a lot of things from London. And one of the things is fabrics from Susie Bellamy. She makes lampshades. She does upholstery fabrics and stuff. We try to use her stuff a lot because it's really colorful. This is a window. It's vintage. I bought it at Good Old Things. And we had the contractor build a box and like put it in to um, give us some light in this room. There's really cool things. I got this in Amsterdam. And this is by an artist named Jim Sperber. He just like throws paint. And I love that sort of like Pollocky kind of vibe. There's a lot of um, pencils. I love colored pencils. So you're gonna see a lot of colored pencils here. I have never met a colored pencil I didn't like. <laughs> this is a great resource. The company that makes this is a company called 20 by 200, where you can just buy art online and you frame it yourself. So it wasn't very expensive. And I think it's really cool because it feels like it's a picture of a tiger, but it's actually a picture of a bunch of rugs hanging on a clothesline. It's one of my favorite things. Here's a sketch of me and Kevin done by Dina First. She's a caricature artist. When um, we first posted this on Instagram, people thought we were married. Kevin is the project manager. He works with me. He's been here for like 10 years. He's in the dining room working right now. You might see him later. This Air France poster I bought on one of my trips to Morocco, like years and years ago. It was only $2 and I was like, I'll buy two. I bought two because I thought one was gonna be damaged, but then I rolled them up together and I was right, the one on the outside got damaged, but this one I got framed and I've had it hanging here for years. It's one of my favorite things. I've always loved these like Air France, like airline, like ads, and I thought I'd get more of them, but I never did, I just had this one. This is a poster that we created for Housing Works. We do this charity called Design on a Dime every year. And every year we create like an image to thank all the people who donated because it's a charity event. And we listed all the people that gave to us and we did like a surfer vibe. It was just, it was a lot of fun. Housing Works is a really good charity, so. I'm inspired by travel. I travel a lot 
I go a lot to Paris. It's one of my favorite places, so it's probably my biggest inspiration, but I've traveled to Morocco and to Italy, you know, Amalfi Coast, Spain. I've been like all over Spain. So I think my travels are my biggest inspirations. And before I could travel, when I was younger, it was movies. I was always inspired by movies, and movies still inspire me. Now I'm gonna show you the main space. It's kind of divided into three sections. In this area I call the lounge. This is where I start my day in the morning and I have my coffee. And there's some really cool art pieces that I love. Like this piece is by Nuriki Kukita. He's a friend of mine and he gave me this for my birthday and now he's a really famous artist. It seems like I know a lot of people that became famous. You'd think I would be doing better. <laughs> but, you know, this is one of my favorites. This is by Luke Smalley. He's known for photography of like men and I got this at Clamp Art. I actually have a couple other Luke Smalley things I'll show you in the bedroom. I'm obsessed with him. His photography is always like so crisp and clear and it definitely, you know, creates a mood. This one is Jack Pearson, which this interesting story, John Derry and I have been friends for like 20 years and he had this in his office. I was there for a party. And I said, can I have that? And he said, I can't give it to you because it's a gift. So 20 years later, I was in P-Town and I saw this for sale in a gallery and I was like, I want that. I didn't even ask the price. I had no idea how much it cost. It was not cheap, but I got it. I finally got it and I had it framed and now I have a Jack Pearson. This I got at Housing Works, really cheap. Housing Works is like amazing. These two paintings were like a set for like $45. And I was like, this looks like real art. It is real art. And so it's like one of my favorites now. This couch is my favorite place in the apartment. This couch I've had for years and years. It's been upholstered three times now. This is a Romo fabric that I put on it. Everybody thought it was crazy, but it's turned out to be the best place to be. I mean, it's really sloppy, but it's like the most comfortable couch. I sleep here sometimes, you know, like naps. I don't sleep here, but it's, it's my favorite place. It's where I start my day. Like I said, it's where people hang out. We have cocktails and there's just a couple of us sitting here just talking because it feels like a separate room from the rest of the room, even though everything else is all one room. These coffee tables were from Post Poden from Amsterdam. When I had a store, I bought a lot from this company. It's a really great resource for like really modern things. And I love this vibe of doing like different colors. This rug is rug company. Rug company is like my favorite, favorite place to go for rugs. So I'm a little bit obsessed with them. We did a show house in the Hamptons like 2017 and we used this tiger rug, smaller version in the closet and I just can't, couldn't stop thinking about it. So I said, I have to buy this rug <laughs> and, then, and I got one for myself. So I'm really happy about that. Now let's go to the dining room, which is actually just right here next to, <laughs> next to the sofa. And this is actually where I entertain, but it's also where I work. So I like to spread out fabrics and samples and stuff. So it's a big table. It seats 10 people. I have 10 chairs. I love these chairs too. They're covered in this Tebo fabric. It's like ECAT. I never met an ECAT I didn't like. So you're going to see a lot of ECAT in this house. So I work here, like I said, and on this table is more colored pencils. As I told you, you're gonna see a lot of colored pencils. Samples, we're working on a project in Chicago now. We're redoing a living room and building a bar. And so I have the whole color palette laid out here. Um, boxes, I kind of collect boxes. So there's stuff in all these boxes, business cards and like note cards and notes and pads and stuff. Um, I like to always have some kind of big flower arrangement because I feel this table's really big when it's empty and I think it looks better when there's something tall vertical going up because this is so horizontal. So these are actually fake from Crate and Barrel, but I mixed in some real stuff so it looks more organic. I think it's important like in interiors to have something organic in like every room. So you always see me like throwing dead sticks around and things like that because I think it just adds something or like real flowers, you know, like orchids I love because they last for a long time. I think that, um, I think this is a really good example of like how I live and like what inspires me. So I like to have all those things around me. A lot of the things that I have 
on this table are gifts from people. People give me things and I like to keep them out. I'm not the kind of person who like re-gifts or gives things away. I keep everything in a drawer if I don't like it. <laughs> but you know, if I like it, you'll see it on display. This chandelier I got at a flea market like God, 15 years ago. And it was like totally just like the frame. It had to get rewired. There were no crystals. So I, I paid like $150 for the chandelier and I paid the guy $150 to rewire it. And then I got all these crystals. Actually, my sister helped me. She found these at Lowe's and shipped them to me. And I, they're all random, different things. Some of them are vintage actually, cause she goes to flea markets too. So these are vintage. They're like maybe five vintage ones and most of these new ones are from Lowe's. And this is a little ornament from John Darian. Like I said, I'm a big fan of John Darian. It's one of my favorite things. Okay, now let's go to the living room. Now we're in the living room. This is my new favorite thing. It's my Porta Romana lamp. I love Porta Romana. Their stuff is beautiful. We did a show house in London last summer and we use all Porta Romana lamps and I was obsessed with them. I designed these bookcases for this apartment when I moved in. I decided to try to maximize the space. So I had the mill worker make these extra boxes and then put them up top. And I think when I was planning it, I hadn't lived here yet. I didn't know this pipe was here. So when they came with all the stuff, they didn't know how to like put it together. So they had to like slide them from the other room across to fit it all together. So I guess I'm never moving. <laughs> because I don't know how I would get it out. But this bookcase is definitely um, very me. It's my favorite color. It's called Old Blue Eyes from Benjamin Moore. And it holds pretty much everything that I own. Like lots and lots of design books. I love interior design. So I buy every book from all my friends. Magazines, of course. Here's a picture of me. That's from when I was younger and I went to Spain. It was actually, I think that was my first trip abroad. I was young and skinny, really skinny, God. Um, more books. I'm obsessed with Lee Radswell, so I have a couple of Lee Radswell books. This is like my favorite gift ever. Kevin got me this for my birthday last year, a bobblehead of me. And I opened it and I was like, oh my God. I, I don't think I've ever had a better gift. It was just hilarious. It's. Probably my favorite thing. I know I say that a lot. This is also one of my favorite things, this vase. It's Italian from the 60s. I got it at Michelle Varian. We used it for a show house. It was really expensive, but I wasn't able to sell it, so it's living here now. And this bust I got at Monger's Market in Connecticut. I love thrift shops and flea markets, but Monger's Market is like a giant. It's like a giant flea market. There's so many cool things and vendors and stuff, so it's a great resource for me. Okay, coffee table 101, you can never have too much stuff. I don't like a coffee table that's really empty, so this is piled up books and flowers and plants. More dead sticks, like I said. Never met a dead stick I didn't like. This vase by Melanie Barlant is my favorite. Mar Melanie is the founder of the Black Artists and Designers Guild and she is a sculptor and she made this vase and she was willing to sell it to me so I was super happy to get one. This I got in France. It's a La Tula Loop, like handmade pottery. I'm obsessed with it. It's just like a lot of stuff, but I think you need a lot of stuff. It kind of like, I think the coffee table is a place where you can really show people who you are, you know? People sit here waiting for you to make their drink and they can like look and see, you know, how your mind works. You don't have to talk to them. I think when I, when I moved here, I knew that I wasn't gonna move for a long time because I've moved 13 times since I've lived in New York. And even though this place is a rental, I thought I'm gonna stay here for a long time and I learned from past experience, you should just do what you want because it's not gonna matter in the end. Like you think you're gonna be someplace for a couple of years, you wind up being there for like eight years now, I'm probably gonna be here forever. You know, they're gonna to have to drag me out of here. <laughs> so I just did everything I wanted. And you know, I was told 
by the broker, I could do whatever I wanted, so I did that. What I love most about my home is the location. I love this neighborhood. NoHo is like heaven. It's like the perfect like link between the East Village and the West Village in Soho. I remember when I was younger, I used to live in the East Village and one day I was walking to Soho and I walked down this street and I just stopped like right outside because I live right where Bleecker and Elizabeth meet. And I said, this would be a great place to live. And like 20 years later, I'm living here. It's just, it's kind of interesting that I, um, I guess I manifested it. Now let's go to the bedroom. This is my bedroom. For me, this space was really important because we work here. So it's like an office. So this is the only space that's really private that really belongs to me. And I wanted it to represent who I really am. So there's lots of black and white photography. I love photography. There's lots of little things that people have given me, lots of fragrances, lots of fashion references, because I love fashion. Here's another photograph by Luke Smalley. And this I got in P-Town like years ago. It's by an artist named Jeff Lee. He does these like letter things. And I think it's sweet, but at the same time, it's kind of poetic, you know. My favorite cologne is Loewe. This Loewe 01 which I've been wearing for years. I got it at Barney's like years ago. I really miss Barney's because that was a place to go on Sundays. It's my favorite, but they're all my favorites when you think about it. I mean, I love Tom Ford. I have tons of Tom Ford. I'm always experimenting and Bottega, but I also love this Creed. This is the one that gets the most compliments. People love this fragrance. It's called Adventus. Anytime I wear it, like I always wear it when I go to the D&D or go shopping for anything, people are like, wow, you smell really good. And I'm, thank you, you know, but like it's expensive, so I don't use it all the time. It's just for savoring. This bus is from my store too. Another thing that we sold most of them, but not all. These little bunny ears are from a Kips Bay party. It was a tribute to Bonnie Williams. And so I saved them because everybody, we all wore bunny ears. It was really cute. I think there's like a like fun picture of me and Pamela and Jacarino wearing bunny ears. I like to have memories of things that happen that made me feel good. And every time when I wake up and I see these, it reminds me of that night. We had so much fun. It's like so fun. It's just like a lot of stuff. This photograph I love. I got this in Paris. It's these women in Madagascar. It's one of my favorites. It's just like kind of like poetic and sad, but I love it. I love fashion references. You know, I love, you know, vintage things. I've never been to Madagascar, but I want to go one day for sure. So I'm obsessed with these curtains. I love it. It's the S. Harris fabric. And I always love this kind of like Japanese like reference. I studied it in college. I studied um, scrolls, Genji scroll, like a whole semester. And so when I saw this fabric, I was like, it's perfect for me. So I have a whole wall of it now in my bedroom. There's lots of really cool things like photographs. Uh, housing works again. It costs a dollar. So, you know, I'm thrifty. But then sometimes I'm extravagant. This is a Thomas McBride. And there's a Wolfgang Tillman. Now here's my closet. It's tiny, but... It has everything that I love. It's actually my favorite place in the room. I know I use the word favorite a lot, but it's my favorite place in the apartment, I should say. I have lots and lots and lots of shirts. I have lots and lots and lots of bags. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. Like you can never have too many bags, belts, or shirts. I'll show you some of my favorites. This, I think, is my favorite, favorite shirt. Margella. It's kind of like a cowboy vibe, which I got at Barney's on sale, of course. One thing I do is I do wait for sales to happen if I can. If I have to have to have something, then I'll buy it. This Prada shirt is custom. I have a lot of Prada, it's like my favorite favorite. I have um, all these boxes. Like every time you make a custom shirt at Prada, they give you like a box and it has like a little window so you can see the shirt. Of course, I never put them back in there, but I save the boxes. This Etro shirt, love, love Etro. This is Etro too. Obsessed with it. I, um, one more. Peter Ackerman is my favorite designer. 
This shirt I had shipped from Beverly Hills because I just had to have it. I have a Calvin Klein shirt from that one moment when Ray Simmons did Calvin Klein. And I, I think it's really cool, it's wool. And I was like, I'm gonna go to Calvin Klein and buy a shirt, and I did. And it's solid, but it's two colors. And I have a black leather shirt, but I think it's just black leather. Club Monaco, it was also on sale. When I was young, I wrote a list of things I wanted to happen, you know, when I got older. And one of the things was to own a Birkin, and recently, I found the list in a box and I forgot I'd even written it, but I already have this. I actually have um, two. Oh, well, technically this is the Kelly bag, but it's, it's funny, like the things like you dream about and then they happen. Home is a place that you go to when you want to get away from everybody else. But for me, home is a place where you can be yourself. Home is a place where you don't have to answer to anybody. You don't have to ask permission for anything. It's a place that should feel safe, it should feel secure, but it also should be a place that rises up to meet you. It should be always uplifting you. I always want like my spaces to feel like me. And hopefully that's optimistic and uplifting. You know, that's basically what my aesthetic is, so hopefully that translates. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.